I do a lot of lists on this channel. Normally, they're based on location, manufacture, stuff like that. But how about something totally stupid, like the coaster's name? Today, let's go around the world and find the best coasters, from A to Z. First, thanks to Arch J Music for pitching this video idea. For each letter, I'll give a bronze, silver, and gold. It doesn't seem fair to limit it to just one. I'm also going to try and be more objective about this, and not necessarily pick my personal favorites. Also, if you want to see the world's worst coasters from A to Z, give me a thousand likes and I'll make that happen. A. I'm giving the bronze to Alpengeist at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, the tallest B&M invert, and the last time I wrote it, super intense and very smooth. The silver goes to Abyssus at Energylandia, the first Vacoma Shockwave. This has two launches, four inversions, over 4,300 feet of track, and it looks like an absolutely elite Vacoma. The gold goes to Air Force One at Funspot Atlanta. This RMC just opened last year, and right away I knew this was one of the most elite coasters in the world. It's an all-star team of RMC elements, absolutely rips through its course, and it's one of my all-time favorites no matter what letter it starts with. B. Some people may want to give it to Boulder Dash. This is one of the highest rated wooden coasters in the world, but I'm picking another wooden legend for number three, Beast at Kings Island. The world's longest wooden coaster at over 7,300 feet. It's a ride that lasts over four minutes. It has a great setting and a great finale. Another wooden coaster takes the two spot, Balder at Leesburg. This intimate prefab has a very simple layout, but it's chock full of airtime. And after riding this over 20 times, I got to see what this was all about. Number one has gotta go to a Batman coaster, but which one? I chose Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid. This triple launch Intamin opened in 2023. Over 3,300 feet long, a 148 foot top hat. And overall, it looks like a slightly toned down version of Velocicoaster. People who have ridden it seem to love it. C. At almost 100 years old, the Coney Island Cyclone checks in at number 3. It's one of the most famous coasters in the world. Actually, probably the most famous. But that doesn't take away from the ride experience. It's held up great over time. More of a modern wooden coaster takes number two, Colossus at Hyde Park. This German Woody was the first Intamin prefab, 159 feet tall and 4,400 feet of track, loaded with airtime, and now a very creepy theme. The top spot belongs to Cannibal at Lagoon. This coaster has made Lagoon a destination, built by Art Engineering, starting with an elevator lift, rising 208 feet, having a 116 degree first drop, followed by four inversions, including the Great Lagoon Roll. D. All three of these coasters are over 200 feet tall and were all built by different manufacturers. Let's start with the B&M Hyper Diamondback at Kings Island. This stands 230 feet, makes its way out into the woods, tossing you out of your seat the whole time, and this ends its mile of track with a splashdown. Then you have Dinaconda, the SNS Fourth Dimension Coaster, opening in 2012. And sadly, this is the last one built. 226 feet tall, 78 miles an hour, three inversions, all while flipping around the side of the track. This was almost number one, but I think there's one coaster that gets the edge. DC Rivals Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World. Built by Mack Rides in 2017, this has a 202 foot twisted drop, 4600 feet of track that's full of twists and turns and fantastic airtime. This made its way into my top 15 earlier this year. E. All of these coasters can be described by another E word, Elite. Number three used to be my overall number one for 10 years. El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Another Intamin prefab, at 181 feet tall and 4,400 feet long. This is the most extreme prefab of the bunch, giving some of the best airtime moments on the planet. Number two is Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park. This German Intamin acts like a hyper, but it's only 174 feet tall. It's got 4,000 feet of track, and ever since it opened in 2001, it's been ranked as one of the best steel coasters on the planet. It takes a lot to beat those two coasters, but Ijanaika at Fuji-Q Highland does it. This is just like Dinaconda, but bigger. 249 feet, almost 3,800 feet long. Insane inversions, whipping through the course at 78 miles an hour, and a lot of people's overall number one. F. I don't want to speak for Falcon's Flight. It's going to break all the records, but I don't know how good the ride is really going to be. I'm leaving it off, and Phonix at Farouk Summerland takes number three. This is the first Vacoma Wildcat. 131 feet tall, 59 miles an hour, three inversions, almost 3,000 feet of track, and this looks like one of Vacoma's best. But there's another Vacoma that's even more loved, Fly at Fantasia Land. 
This is the first ever launch flying coaster, combining amazing theming with over 4,000 feet of track and two inversions. Some people might even put this number one, but for me, that belongs to Fury 325 at Carowinds. B&M's best coaster, and the world's tallest coaster with a lift hill at 325 feet. It's also one of the world's longest coasters at 6,600 feet, and this has one of the great layouts of all time. Number two in America, as far as I'm concerned. G. This wasn't as stacked as the other letters, but finding three was no problem. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind was the talk of Disney World in 2022. This Vekoma spinning coaster has a great theme, great effects, almost 5,600 feet of track, and a great launch to start. When you think of G, your mind goes straight to Goliath, and the best one is at Six Flags Over Georgia. This B&M Hyper isn't even really a Hyper. It's 200 feet tall, but only drops 175 feet. But that doesn't matter. This has an awesome layout at almost 4,500 feet. Great airtime and bone-crushing positives. But the number one spot has to go to Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This was also once my number one overall coaster, a CCI that sits in the Knott's parking lot, but still manages to have a great layout. It's only 118 feet tall, but has over 4,500 feet of track, and it's out of control with great airtime pops and laterals. H. I'll spare all of you Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, and I have to leave out Hyperia at Thorpe Park. Again, nobody's ridden this yet, but there's another hyper that I have my eye on. This is Hyperion at Energylandia, a massive intimate hyper, starting with a 269-foot drop, over 4,700 feet of track, even having an inversion. Mock Rides is back at number two, Helix at Leesburg, a double launch coaster built on a hillside, 4,500 feet of track and seven inversions. It's one of the most complete rides ever built. Still, not good enough for number one. For that, we go to Japan, Hakuge at Nagashima Spa Land. This RMC was spawned from the massive Intamin Woody White Cyclone, so this stands 180 feet tall, 5,000 feet of track, three inversions, and tons of airtime. People who have ridden it say it's a top-tier RMC. I, I'm sorry, I have to leave out Intimidator 305. That loss is Dale Earnhardt theme last month, so let's start with Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This is huge, 179 feet tall, and it uses that quarry wall to perfection, but it's kind of a short ride. If it was longer, it could easily take the number one spot. As for number two, that goes to Ice Speed at Mirabellandia. This gives off Maverick vibes, if it was combined with Storm Runner. It has an LSM launch, hitting 68 miles an hour in 2.2 seconds, a 180 foot top hat, 3200 feet of track, and two inversions. Number one wasn't hard to find, Iron Guazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. RMC went above and beyond with this project, doubling the original Guazi's lift, 206 foot drop, 4000 feet of track, and it tears through its course so fast, you can't believe how fast it slams into the final breaks. J. There aren't that many good options here, so let's start with Jungle Trailblazer at Oriental Heritage. This Chinese gravity group is 110 feet tall, 3,500 feet of track, and has a course group. It also looks like it's chock full of airtime. We turn to Gerslauer for number two, Junker at Power Park. Finland isn't a hot spot for coasters, but this infinity coaster looks like one of the best. 131 feet tall, 2,800 feet of track, three inversions. This finished loop wrapping around a bridge. Overall, it looks like a top tier Gerslauer. Number one, of course, has to be Joker. No, 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 yes, there you go. The RMC at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This is considered one of the weakest RMCs, and I can't say I necessarily disagree, but even a lower tier RMC is a great coaster, and this deserves a top spot. K. We'll start with the world's tallest coaster, King Ka Six Flags Great Adventure. This Intamin is 19 years old now, and it's held that record for the tallest coaster the whole time. That is, until Falcon's Flight opens. This standing 456 feet tall, maxing out at 128 miles an hour. Number two is something I wouldn't agree with, but I know you all love it. Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa. This was B&M's first huge coaster, 143 feet tall, almost 4,000 feet of track and seven inversions. This is very intense, it has a great setting. I can see why people like it, even if it's not my cup of tea. Number one goes to Conda at Walby, Belgium, one of Intamin's finest, opening in 2021. This has almost 4,000 feet of track, starting with a 164 foot twisted drop, amazing airtime hills, and even a non-inverting cobra roll. L, no losers in this group. We have a choice of two Leviathans. The Woody in Australia is good, but I'm going with the B&M Giga in Canada. This was B&M's first crack at a Giga, and to this day it holds up well. 306 foot drop, 5500 feet of track, loaded with airtime and speed moments. The next coaster is less than half its size, Let Coaster at Legendia. 
The one and only Vekoma Bermuda Blitz. This is 131 feet tall, 3,000 feet of track, three inversions, sharp airtime hills, a corkscrew inside the station. This gives Poland an elite coaster outside of Energylandia. Lightning Rod at Dollywood is my number one here. Now sporting a brand new chain lift. And as underwhelming as it looks, your speed at the top isn't going to change much, if at all. This has a course along a hillside full of amazing elements, 3,800 feet long, a quad down finale, and hopefully will stay in my top 10 after this year. M. This might be the most loaded letter, so good that I had to leave off Millennium Force, Magnum XL200, Mako, and Mystic Timbers. Just making the cut is Monster at Adventureland. This Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster is elite from start to finish. A 133 foot drop at 101 degrees, 5 inversions, hang time, air time. The more you ride it, the more you appreciate it. The same applies to Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa. The more I ride this B&M invert, the more I realized how brilliant this is. It uses trenches to add to the ride. Also, by definition, adds to the speed. And for my money, this is the best of the B&M inverts. My personal top ranked M coaster is Magnum XL200, but I know I'm weird, so I'm giving the number one spot to another Cedar Point coaster, Maverick. This is very well rounded, almost 4,500 feet of track, only 105 feet tall, but full of tight, intense elements, throwing in a 70 mile an hour launch mid ride. N. We'll start with one of the laziest names ever New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. The original RMC just slapped new in front of its old name. But despite that, and despite this being a prototype and not the strongest RMC, it's still a standout ride. Then we have Nitro, the B&M Hyper from Six Flags Great Adventure. A lot of times, it gets trashed on, but I don't think it deserves the hate. With almost 5400 feet of track and a 215 foot drop, it's loaded with airtime and some positives. At number 1, I got Nemesis at Alton Towers, now officially known as Nemesis Reborn, getting a full track replacement and a lot of people's favorite coaster in the UK. This can't rise above the tree line, so it takes place in trenches, adding to the ride experience. Oh, sorry Nemesis, I couldn't include your partner in crime, Oblivion. My number 3 spot goes to Orion, the Giga, not Giga, at Kings Island. I know, it's only 287 feet tall, but the drop is what matters, and that's 300 feet. It's not the best Giga of the bunch. It leaves some to be desired, but it's still a great ride. Number 2 is Oz Iris at Park Asterix. This French invert gives me Montu vibes, having the same colors and same Egyptian theme, but this one isn't quite as big. 131 feet tall, 3300 feet of track, 5 inversions. I've never ridden it, but it looks very good. The top spot goes to Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. One of the few RMC topper tracks, this takes place out in the woods. You can barely see any of it from the park, and it's definitely a short ride, not even 3000 feet. But it starts with a 162 foot drop, has tons of strong airtime and a double barrel roll finale. P. All three of these are in the same area of the US, starting with Phoenix at Knobles. Constantly voted the best wooden coaster in the world, this ride is just pure fun. So much strong airtime with just a buzz bar and super smooth. I can ride this all day. Number 2 is on the other side of Pennsylvania, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. Ever since Morgan came in and gave this the hyper coaster overhaul, it turned into a world class coaster and has been for 23 years now. 228 foot drop, 85 miles an hour, glossy smooth, and it ends with violent airtime. Number 1 is Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This Intamin is loaded with forces, going through a multi pass launch, intense backwards airtime, a great drop off the 178 foot top hat, a big outer bank. It also has two hang time filled inversions. This is just a complete ride. Q. This was pretty slim, so let's start with Quicksilver Express at Gilroy Gardens. This is the one and only Morgan Mine Train, using the terrain very well. Nothing crazy, but the star of the park. Next, we go to Asia Park in Vietnam for Queen Cobra. This is an SLC, so that's scary, but it's a new one. It was built in 2017 and has best restraints, so I bet it's a pretty good ride. Number 1 is Quantum Leap at Sochi Park in Russia. This Vekoma giant inverted boomerang was built in 2014. I'm surprised Vekoma was still selling these in 2014, but 10 years after the Deja Vu's made their debut, Vekoma kept shelling these out. When done right, these boomerangs are amazing. R. This was an all-star list of candidates, and I'm starting with Raptor at Cedar Point. This was B&M's first large-scale invert, opening in 1994. 137 feet tall, 3800 feet of track, 6 inversions, and the last time I rode it, it was insanely intense and perfectly smooth. My personal favorite R coaster is Raging Bull, the B&M Hyper at Six Flags Great America. This Hyper Twister doesn't have the boring out and back layout, but still mixes in some great airtime moments in the back. 
None greater than the first drop coming off the pre-lift. Number one is Ride to Happiness at Plopsaland. I don't think many people would argue against it. This park in Belgium opened this mock extreme spinner in 2021. Basically, Time Traveler 2.0. Launching the train up to 56 miles an hour, over 3,000 feet of track, five inversions, and people cannot stop raving how great this is. S. Skyrush. Just kidding. Let's start with Schwer des Karnen at Hansa Park. One of the most interesting coasters ever built, Gerslauer bursted out of the comfort zone for this one. 240 feet tall, 4,000 feet of track, surprise elements. It's high on my bucket list. Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England takes the number two spot. The best layout of any coaster I've ever seen in person. A 221 foot drop and 5,400 feet of track. A perfect mix of airtime and twister. And only the bad lap bars keep it out of my top 10. Number one is the number one coaster in my opinion. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. There has never been a coaster like this, but I hope there will be another coaster like it sometime in the future. RMC went crazy with this. The first Hyper Hybrid, 5,700 feet long and having the most airtime in the world. All of the airtime being high quality. Throw in four whippy inversions and you got the goat of roller coasters. T. This was really hard. I had to leave off Taiga, Top Thrill 2, Twisted Timbers, and Time Traveler. Making the cut is Two Tatis, the brand new Intamin launch coaster at Park Asterix. Very similar to Pantheon, but looks even better. 66 miles an hour, 167 feet tall, 3,500 feet of track, and three inversions. Twisted Colossus is the only American coaster on this list. RMC's only dueling coaster coming to Magic Mountain in 2015. I've ridden this more than any other coaster, and every element on both sides of the track is just world class. The top spot belongs to T-Express, an Intamin prefab at Everland in South Korea. The last prefab is the most complete, Maybe not as intense as El Toro, but bigger, longer, more airtime. 184 feet tall and over a mile of track. You. I had to scrape for this one. I'm starting with Untamed at Canopy Lake Park, the Gerslauer Eurofighter. It's 72 feet tall, 1,200 feet of track, a 97 degree drop, three inversions. A good coaster for a small park. Number two is all the Ultra Twisters out there. These are made by Togo. There was one in America until 2005. Dying with Astroworld, but there's still a few in Japan. These have steep drops, inline twists, forward and backward sections, and I'd love to get on one of these next summer. Number one is no surprise, Untamed at Wallaby Holland. This RMC didn't break any records, it's just a solid ride. 120 feet tall, 57 miles an hour, 3,500 feet of track, four inversions. And again, people just rave about this thing. V. I had some good ones to choose from. Volcano missed the cut, and I had to leave off Voltron. This coaster is opening at Europa Park this year, and we'll see just how good it is. Number three is Viper. No. No. Yes, there we go. The wooden coaster at Six Flags Great America. I've always been borderline obsessed with this coaster, blowing me away the first time I rode it. And when you ride it in the back, you get some great airtime. Number two is Velocicoaster, one of the most complete coasters ever built. This intimate double launch coaster opening at Islands of Adventure in 2021. It's a great mix of forces, a 155 foot top hat, 70 miles an hour, four inversions, hang time and air time, good theming. It's a top 10 coaster, but there is one other that's a top five coaster and that's Voyage at Holiday World. This was one of the most ambitious coasters ever built. The Gravity Group building this out in the woods, 6,400 feet of track, 159 feet tall, a ride that never ends and never loses speed, voted the number one wooden coaster in the world many times. W. Some awesome options here too. So good that I had to leave off Wildfire at Kilmarden. That got bumped for Wildcat's Revenge, another RMC. This one a hybrid and opening in 2023. 140 feet long, 3,500 feet of track, four inversions, a very solid RMC. But RMC can do better, and they did with Wicked Cyclone, opening in 2015 at Six Flags New England. I love this way more than I should. It's not that impressive on paper, just 109 feet tall and 3,300 feet of track. But those elements pop, and it has the extra lap that adds a lot. Number one is not an RMC, it's a GCI. Wood Coaster at Night Valley in China. This is GCI's Magnum Opus, built on a hillside, winding its way down 4,800 feet of track. It looks absolutely out of control, and most people have it high on their bucket list. X. Not too many options here, but I got three good ones. X Flight at Six Flags Great America, a B&M wing. One of the most beautiful coasters to look at, and when you ride it, it packs a punch including a near-miss element through a tower. Number two is Accelerator at Knott's, the original hydraulic launch coaster, and despite being a prototype, still is amazing 22 years later. Zero to 82 in 2.3 seconds is a crazy rush, and then you got that great 205-foot top hat. 
Number one is, of course, X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. One of the great coaster experiences in the world. Aerodynamics Final Coaster. Starting off by dropping you 215 feet face first. Then flipping you around 3600 feet of track. Definitely a coaster I took for granted when I lived in California. Why? This was a hard one, but I got a decent trio. Yukon Quad is an intimate family launch coaster located at La Palle in France. This is the same layout as Juvelin at Jersey Summerland, a coaster I really enjoyed last summer. It's not the craziest coaster, but still packs a punch. Number two is Yagiyama Cyclone, a massive aero mine train at Biniland, Japan. This is 56 feet tall, 1700 feet long, and it's got all kinds of wacky transitions. I'm curious about this for the jankiness alone. Number one is a little more legit, Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland, the world's tallest and longest dive coaster. This has a vertical drop at 245 feet into an underwater tunnel, then flies into four inversions over 3600 feet of track. Z. All three of these stand on wood, starting with Zeus at Mount Olympus. 90 feet tall, 2,900 feet of track. This out and back CCI is arguably the best coaster in the park. Depends whether or not you like getting beaten up on Hades. Zip and Pippin is another Wisconsin Woody that's full of airtime. This gravity group at the city owned Bay Beach in Green Bay. This is a replica of a coaster of the same name at Liberty Land, Elvis's favorite coaster. And that ejector death hill is insane. Number one is the world-class RMC Zadra at Energylandia, a steel coaster on wood supports, 206 feet tall, 4,300 feet of track, and by the numbers, the best paced RMC in the world. This looks like it could be a top five overall coaster. So there you go, the best coasters from A to Z. Let me know what you think, where you agree or disagree, and if you have any other thoughts, sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. Remember, a thousand likes and I'll do the worst coasters from A to Z. And give me a sub if you're new here and want to see more content like this. Also, check out my second channel where I post copyright free off ride footage. And my baseball channel if you're also a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.